Right, right. Keep moving, right. Going too fast. Where's your buddy? There are few men in the world as well acquainted with national and international security concerns as Richard Marcinko. As a Navy SEAL, Marcinko rose through the ranks to become commanding officer of SEAL Team 2. Marcinko's next command was creation of SEAL Team 6, the elite counterterrorism unit. His final command was to be his most infamous. Marcinko's Red Cell Unit was tasked with testing base security at U.S. military installations worldwide. Using terrorist tactics, Red Cell took hostages, planted bombs, and created embarrassment for base commanders and security personnel. Military security experts proved to be no match for Marcinko's decades of experience in special warfare operations. How many bombs I got? How many missiles? How many torpedoes? No torpedoes on a submarine? We think I'm stupid? All the way down, Chief. All the way down. Hit that thing. How do you get the work in Where Where's the car at? Where's the car at? After his retirement from the Navy, Richard Marcinko became world famous with the release of his autobiography, Rogue Warrior. Marcinko remains active as an author, penning fictionalized accounts of Red Cell operations. Marcinko also keeps his hand in real-world operations through his Virginia-based security firm, SOS Temps Incorporated. My company, SOS Temps Inc., has the capability of providing security analysis primarily overseas. The unique capabilities of it is not just what your environment you're working in, but what it's going to cost to get your product to market. The other corporation portion is, of course, training for SWAT, training for security personnel. It's a total package. It's what the user needs. It's tailored to the user. SOS Temps Inc. is employed uh, under contract by Eastern Michigan University out of uh, Ypsilanti, Michigan. We were down here teaching an advanced hostage rescue course for a SWAT team. The uh, host team is uh, here in Hillsborough County. The uh, SWAT team is our host team. It's Hillsborough County that has a terrific uh, training facility. However, the students that came here come from eight different states as far north as Michigan and as far west as Mississippi. So they are uh, getting accreditation by the university and we are bringing to bear skills that we have in working around the world. Uh, the types of targets they're getting training on, of course, are uh, one shooting skills, tactical skills day and night, and uh, problems with the bank, hold up a plane takedown, and uh, train. It is my personal belief and a corporate belief that uh, the genie is out of the bottle. There is no longer a world order. That uh, if we just look at the Muslims that are now uh, have a true belief in what they're doing is, is a jihad to purify the world, plus the different ethnic nationalities are coming up with the opening up of, of uh, establishing a new, new identification and, and uh, the cults that feel that they should uh, present themselves as a, as, a, as a voice in the world that we're gonna have more dissension, more threat. Uh, basically, there's a, uh, because of the economy of the world, uh, we have more have-nots, and have-nots are very unsettled, and they are now starting to demonstrate that they have a need.
course that we're giving now is a five-day course on the university that initially identifies the level of expertise of the officers that attend here, since there really are not standards, standardizations of SWAT officers across the United States. Uh, in that process, we get them to have more time on the range they probably have had in the last six months due to the pressures of what's happening on the street today. Through the first two days, we will get them through their basic shooting skills, start teaching them some newer techniques to get their, their uh, weapons down range on target and be a kill factor and be more effective. That goes all the way through the, new, the latest tactics at night. The rest of the course goes into uh, uh, various scenario technique, techniques. The bank environment uh, involves negotiations and it involves a hostage rescue situation within the bank, how to break the barriers that are there for surveillance, and we also train the bank employees on what they can do to help the police on the outside coming in. The next major evolution, of course, is a plane takedown. Uh, we are using a 727 from Delta that allows them to learn the different techniques and skill levels that are necessary to swarm an aircraft and to save as many hostages as possible. The last one that we're doing now is a very similar to a plane, it's a train takedown, uh, and that is a, an, another uh, target of opportunity that teaches them how they can use those skills of doing either the train or doing a bus, uh, and of course it's a timely thing in that we're in a pre-Olympic mode. It is our view that it's very important that training be maintained at a high state of level of readiness because they're perishable skills. Uh, once upon a time, one would say that many missions belong to special operations and many belong to, to police. If you look at current events today, the special operations are in fact in Haiti doing police, police roles. And here in the United States, police are doing special operation roles when you have to move in on compounds like the cults patrol. So there's been a cross-blending of task and mission uh, without our, uh, our designing it. It just has happened naturally. They are perishable skills in that uh, you need to save the innocent. And that means that the shooting skills have to be, uh, for the layman's terms, all within a three by five card, under stress, in confined and, and dangerous environments. One of the unique things that uh, we have discovered in SOS Temps Inc. is with the new roles of mission of the military doing police work and the police doing more military work is that there is no real body that does the transitional training that takes the unique capabilities of the police 
and teaches them the patrolling to get to the compounds, the survivability to get to the compound, and to bring bigger and stronger weapons to the bear. For the military, it's the flip side of that, is that they have the, the firepower, but they don't have the, the training of how to do the policing action, which is in fact, don't kill them, but you've got to contain them. Uh, it's a civilianization of that capability. And of course, it's got to be within a lawful structure, which is different between war and peace. What I'm talking about is, when the weapon's here, you have to get closer to me to get that gun. One, two, my body can be positioned so that you have to go through my body to get to the gun. And three, that allows me all opportunity to utilize my offhand, at least to interrupt this technique. Break that center of gravity as easy as that. Stand up. Go ahead, stand up. Stand up. Okay. You see, it takes nothing to keep them off balance. The probably biggest challenge with every tactical class, corporate structure I work with, is trying to convince them that new is good. Particularly when you're dealing with senior corporate members. They know how they got to the top, and they feel everybody else has to get to the top that way. It may have been a long time, so they've been in the trenches, trying to find out how to do a product line, a development line, and getting things done. And as we all know, the world has changed, computers have changed, satellites have changed. We do things now expeditiously, we think on our feet, and if we don't, our competition kills us. The same thing happens to the police and the tactical guys. The bad guys have more money, primarily because of drugs. They have better equipment. There's more of them, and they have to stay on top of things. So it's a highly competitive, think on your feet, crisis process on a day-to-day -day function in terms of uh, how it has to be. The mind must always be active. The mind must always be positive, and they must know what they're doing at all times. It becomes a discipline of life not just something to do for an eight-hour day. So I've got a great weapon here. This is a great lethal and non-lethal weapon, so use it. So he comes into me. Come on in. Imagine that in the sternum. If he wants to take it like that, all I'm going to do is give him the receiver and give him the gun. And that strike is going to be here, here. Most people, that'll be good enough. And that's a pretty good strike. Can you follow that? Okay, the other thing is where most people are going to grab it, just grab the barrel. If he grabs that barrel, don't pull away. You turn it right into it. One of my personal beliefs and what I've done for years in training is I believe that it has to be saturation training. Saturation training means we, you stay with a mode of training until you totally understand it, rather than going through the total package of mission profile, where you just get a smidgen of this and a smidgen of that, and say you've been trained, but in fact, you have not improved your proficiency. SOS Temps brings in blocks of training to guarantee proficiency in that product line. Boom! Uh, my personal expertise is over 30 years in the Navy as a, as a SEAL. My first command job was commanding officer SEAL Team 2 of, of note, and I established SEAL Team 6, the First Navy's counter-terrorist team. Uh, I've been a planner on uh, the security for the Olympics in L.A. in 1984 and uh, have done uh, numerous jobs since I've been uh, retired you know, for corporate, corporate 500 companies. Boom. Historically or hysterically, you know, the eyes of the beholder. I've been accused of running military mafiosa. I have always treated my commands as a true family. Uh, my shooters are my sons, their families are my families, and that is carried about with us today in the civilian world. Those that go through training with us feel and sense that family. It's beyond just being a comrade in arms. It's a definite family spirit. And that through this training cycle is assimilated within the students. And although
although they may come from 18 states, 22 installations, that is absorbed in their class. Their class has an entity. They identify with their class and their experiences in that class. They give each other cute nicknames that come up within the training process, uh, normally because of a blunder. Uh, but it gives it the personality of the class. It gives the class not only a personality, an identity, and a family spirit. And that is the way I function, the way the corporation functions, and it's our goal to make whoever we serve function the same way. What is one of the things we do more often than anything else that we need to be aware of? Well, nine times out of ten. It's my personal belief that uh, SOS Temps Inc. Is, is the best to do that based on the expertise and the talent that I surround myself with. I'm just a corporate man at the top of the ladder. The real talent is the people that go to the field that came from years and years of expertise in their fields and have the same dynamic professionalism and, and the willingness to share their expertise with the people that hire us. The people that work for me have uh, total expertise, have been in a combat environment, they understand stress, they understand what happens in the street and in the gutter. They are both uh, military background and special operations and technical background from uh, companies like our corporations and, and departments like the National Security Agency to do the high-tech computer and electronic uh, surveillance. Today's police departments face a commonality of threat. The urban environment is more violent. There is more crime. In that process, they have to face people that are more violent and with bigger weapons, and it's noisier and nastier. The laws, however, have restricted and tied the hands of our police departments. There is no standardization, per se, across the United States. I'm not saying SOS provides all of it, but it certainly does provide a lot of them going across as we work with the different trainers from each state and as we move around. What we want to do is be here, you got to shoot me, go check this door. This being, yeah, here. Well, I'd like to say that SOS has all the solutions. Uh, unfortunately, we're not big enough to do that. and. Uh, one of the real, uh, realistic issues of life is that the world is changing every day. We try to stay abreast of it because we work around the world in an international environment and we work with international threat. The fear uh, I have is that uh, the normal American citizen and co American corporate citizen uh, does not take any action until it's too late. We work under crisis control. SOS Temps is there to help you plan prior to the crisis. We do have a capability to establish evacuation teams when you get in a crisis. Uh, but our best uh, step forward is to help you plan strategically that uh, you can get your people out in time, that we will tell you when it's happening so you can move your people, and in worst case, we'll go in and save you. And it's one of those things we don't like to do, but we have a capability of doing. Listen, you got to get my wife's in there. you got to get in there. Anybody else? One of the other unique problems that uh, normal police have, and normal corporations have, is the safety standards. Uh, SOS Temps Inc. goes in and trains at the combat environment. Uh, we use ranges to the full maximum facilities. We extend beyond the normal safety standards based on the capabilities of the trainees, and we are there hands-on, as you can see from, from the state. We are hands-on night and day to ensure safety and to ensure that they're doing it the right way. And left, it brings the, the average trainee or student forward left, forward as close as you can get them to a combat environment in either a civilian or a wartime mode. 
Uh, it's our corporate belief that the money spent on having us train the people, whether the, the people that are in security or in police forces come to visit us and go through training, is well spent in corporate or city liability. Oh. In saving the life, you're saving the, either the tax dollar of the industry or the city, and of course for the corporate, you're worrying about what happens in, in liabilities that is your, your uh, shareholder. The current, the current product we're working on now, the SWAT training, is an example of uh, what SOS can do. We, in essence, are training the trainers. We're training these SWAT people from around the United States to go home and be trainers of their own SWAT teams. They have, uh, many of them have been with us two and three times now in different courses. So it's a revisitation and they continue to develop expertise. Along with that, they bring with them their unique problems, and we address them within the core structure. So we learn more about the civilian problems as we teach our military and civilian expertise to them and make it a current thing. Come and stare at that chamber, make your turn. You're used to doing that instinctively, and you won't shoot anybody. Make your turn. Remember, look high. Okay. Good job. And if I don't even shoot him off my gun, what can I do? Karachi floor jack. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. On a personal note, I have been uh, often accused of being a loose cannon or on the edge of uh, a, lot of, a lot of facts of life. Uh, I have tried always to stay ahead of my enemy, uh, whomever I decided my enemy was. That philosophy carries on to the corporation and our training. Is a good hit Another on, unique facet of SOS stand. Tense Inc. It's still center is that the only thing that's locked in stone are fundamentals. We treat, train, and are sacred on fundamentals. The adaptation of those fundamentals is based on the needs of the users. Not only do we meet those needs and what they're needing for today, but we have spent extensive time on research and development of new product and, in fact, design so that we stay on the cutting edge on what the users need, not just today, but tomorrow. The fact that we go around the world studying threat, we try to stay ahead of the bad guys. So if they build a wall, we get the ladder. And we continue to do that around the world. It, it, the problem is management versus leadership. That's in the military, it's in the corporate world, and it's in the police forces. We have a lot of managers, we have few damn leaders.